It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Sergeant Amy Megas with the Annapolis Police Department. You know her as the Public Information Officer. She has a new title also, and we're going to get to that in a moment. And Jeremy Browning, he's the founder of Annapolis Pride. Since everybody knows what the Annapolis Police Department does, but might not know what the Annapolis Pride does, explain to people what Annapolis Pride is. So Annapolis Pride is a grassroots organization. We're all volunteers. The group formed because Annapolis does not have a pride or did not have a pride previously. So we are hoping to spread awareness, spread visibility, and connect the community with the LGBTQ community. Perfect. And with that being said, you came to the Annapolis Police Department with an idea. Yes. um, So the, the human rights campaign puts out a human equality index where they rank cities on their gay friendliness. Mm -hmm. It's a score out of 100. So Annapolis um, was missing some points because the police department did not have a LGBTQ liaison. Okay. So um, that's when I went to the, the Annapolis Police Department and I asked them if they would be interested in doing that. And you just walked right in the door and you said, hi, I'm Jeremy with your Annapolis Pride shirt on. I want you to have an LGBTQ liaison or no, did it not work that way? No, I had already begun, I had already uh, been connecting with the police department at uh, in various capacities and was building a relationship with Amy Miguez and Chief Scott Baker and why well, I just- They already knew you. Yeah, yes, okay. correct. For good reasons. Yes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Amy's laughing. Uh, so Amy, you know probably or maybe you didn't, that police de- uh, police departments across the country have LGBTQ units or liaisons, and uh, the Annapolis Police Department had not. Were you aware of that? Yeah, um, there are many police departments that have either liaisons or actual units that serve as a um, way to communicate directly with uh, that segment of the community in their in their. Um, area and usually the their bigger departments you know washington dc has a unit that um isn't staffed 24 hours a day but it's pretty active and and people can call them directly um to report crime um and crime against the lgbtq community is something that's real so there are often targeted crimes hate crimes yes yeah definitely i mean like i've i've said before annapolis fortunately hasn't had some of those problems in the past, but uh, there could be unreported crime that's going on. And and also we wanna uh, just open up those lines of communication. And Jeremy, this is a, is it easier for members of the LGBTQ community to come to like a liaison rather than just any officer not designated because of either training or a special understanding, do you think? I, I definitely think that's true. Um, you know, when I first, before we launched Annapolis Pride, I was talking to some friends that had just moved from DC to the Annapolis area. And they were concerned that by encouraging people to be more visible in the community, that they might be at higher risk of violence or harassment and that they would go to the police department and the police department wouldn't do anything. So I think this sends a strong message that the police department is here to protect and serve everyone. Right. And it's interesting, I went down to the Pride Parade in D.C. One of the first booths I saw was for D.C. Police Department's LGBTQ liaison unit. Yeah, I think having the the unit or having the liaison that we have is a sign to the community that we are interested in what's going on in the community if they need our help and also that we're committed to training. We we already our officers have already received training, diversity training, training on on this kind of issue before. Uh-huh. But it just uh, I think makes it more obvious to the public that that is something that is part of our training and that um, we serve the whole community. Very good. We're going to take a short break. This is Donna Cole on the fourteen thirty connection. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is Sergeant Amy Megath with the Annapolis Police Department. She's the public information officer. Her new title as of September 26th, or at least that's when it was announced, um, in addition to being PIO, is she is the LGBTQ liaison. Also with us is Jeremy Browning. He is the founder of Annapolis Pride. We can now expect to see the Annapolis Police Department marching in the Annapolis Pride Parade. Yeah, we would definitely be happy to join them. We've been marching in the parades recently and Jeremy actually joined us for at least one parade uh, and we're happy to have him. Okay, what some of the training that you've, are you adding additional training with us? Well, certainly that's something that we're gonna consult. Uh, one of the things I'm doing starting out at this position is trying to meet with as many groups in the Annapolis area as possible to um, get their input on what they want to see from us. And that's certainly something I'm gonna ask about, what kind of training specifically would they be interested in? And actually the regional, um, division of the Anti-Defamation League reached out to me and they do provide training like this as well. So that's something when I meet with them that I'll talk talk to them about. I'm particularly interested in teens. Yes. Um, because, and Jeremy, you probably have experience being a teenager, we all do, and we remember how difficult it is being a teenager. It's tough, it's tough. And it's, I would have to guess it's especially tough being a not straight teenager, even today in 2018. Yes, I think it probably is. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to go speak to the um, Annapolis High School Gay Straight Alliance, which is now the Pride Heart or the Panther Heart Club. I'm probably messing that up, which did not exist when I was at Annapolis High School. So that's a big step in the in the right direction. And I, I there was about 20 or 25 students, and I asked them if they felt safe, and the ones in the room said yes. But I imagine there's many kids that were not in the room that probably did not feel safe to go to that meeting and be seen going to that meeting. Were you a Panther? Did you go to yes, Annapolis? Yes, I did. And did you feel safe at Annapolis? Were you, were, were you out? I'm sorry. No, I was not out. Okay. And I did not feel safe to be out okay. at Annapolis High School. Amy, you are probably aware of this. I know we've both been at mental health seminars in various capacities, me as a mom, you as a police officer, and it's already concerning no matter what you are, no matter your sexual preference, no matter what demographic you are, that there's a lot of stress on teenagers today. This adds a whole different dynamic, and there's, I'm sure, crimes perpetrated against kids that are LGBTQ. Yeah, I know one of your big concerns has been teen suicide. Right. And it, it's no secret that teens that identify as, as gay or tra- transitioning, um, to uh, they are at increased risk uh, for those thoughts and, and for committing suicide. So if by any way us having a liaison lets those teens know that you know we we feel that that they are a valid community part of our community then then that's helpful and if a teenager is listening to this and wants to reach out to either one of you what is the best way to do that yeah they can reach me directly at the police department it's 410-268-9000 and uh you know i work (laughs) all the time (laughs) jeremy uh, the best way to reach out is we are very active on Facebook. Uh-huh. You just find us on Facebook at Annapolis Pride, or you can email info at annapolispride.org. Additionally, PFLAG, Annapolis and Anne Arundel, Anne Arundel County is a great resource for families, youth, adults, anybody that uh, needs help they provide a lot of resources and p flag is a nonprofit again organization providing support and resources for lesbian gay bisexual transgender and queer communities their families friends and allies p flag annapolis and arundel county is located in central maryland offers support for our local lgbtq community now as you know both know maybe you don't but teenagers do not pick up a phone and call a number or go on facebook for the most part they're interested in Snapchat or texting. Will this be uh, something that any of you, either Annapolis Police Department, Annapolis Pride, or, and you can't answer for P flag, is there some other way teens can reach you if they wanted to text a number or? We don't have a text line at the police department. Okay. Um, that is something that we want to do for tip line, but okay. um, that's not so something we possibly really Possibly in the future, Jeremy? Yes, I think it'd be a great thing to offer in the future. Snapchat even. 
because they're on Snapchat. I do not have a Snapchat stop. account for the police department. However, I have not been so active on it. <laughs> what do you want to relay to the LGBTQ community in Annapolis and beyond? There is currently, we spoke about this before the, the interview started, that there is not currently a liaison with the Anne Arundel County Police Department. Jeremy, you said you were going to, that's your next step. Amy, you're not aware of that, but Jeremy was going to use your resources. Yes, that's a great idea. And, you know, my big thing with um, being named the liaison is reaching out to all the groups that I can possibly find in Annapolis. And certainly if there's ones that I have not yet contacted, please contact me. Um, again, the number 410-268-9000 or the email amiguez at annapolis.gov. Um, I want to meet with groups. I want them to have input on what our policy and procedures should be and on training that our officers receive. Jeremy, anything to add to that? We're just very happy to have Amy Miguez as the <laughs> LGBTQ liaison. All right, we're gonna take another short break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. I'm in the studio today with Jeremy Browning. He's the founder of Annapolis Pride, and he had a brilliant idea that the Annapolis Police Department needed an LGBTQ liaison, and he took that to the Annapolis Police Department, and back on September 26, the Annapolis Police Department announced that Sergeant Amy Migeth would be the LGBTQ liaison. Did this come as a surprise to you? Did you volunteer and say, I want to do this. No, I I knew that Jeremy was asking for it, and so I was actively campaigning, and that I would be happy to do it. Jeremy, Annapolis Pride is a relatively new organization. Yes, when did that spring up? When did um, it start? So we we officially like, launched in at the end of May, so of this year. So very new. I know P Flag is the sort of like the big umbrella group that handles a lot of the advocacy, and going back to those that feel marginalized, those that have felt uh, victimized, those that aren't ready to come out, who's helping those people? I would have to say that uh, P Flag has the most resources and capacity on the ground right now, and Annapolis Pride is is uh, has been very visible in the community, which is an important piece, increasing visibility. Um, and we're connecting folks with resources like P Flag. Mm -hmm. um, you said you didn't feel safe as a high school student. The kids that were in school that were out uh -huh. or that were more visible, um, they experienced a lot of harassment. And that was something I was very scared of. And I know that it still goes on today. So you know, that's why this is so important. There, you know, the, the community still faces harassment. If you look at when the Capitol writes an article about something that's going on in the LGBT community and you look at the comments, a lot of them are not very nice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that just shows that there's still a lot of people that have fear or discomfort around this issue. That, it's a good way of putting it, that have fear or discomfort around this issue. People that haven't accepted. And you know, who knows if, the, if they have kids, what their feelings are, what their, the fear of the unknown, right? Right. And how do you get over that? How do you, how do you help people beyond that? Those comments, and, and by the way, I've been dealing with social media comments since social media sprang up, and comments on any subject you're gonna have that aren't beautiful. When you get somebody commenting something awful to you, how do you deal with that? Is your first instinct to get mad? I mean, at first, at first you get mad or you get hurt, um, but then it just, it just reinforces the importance of the work that we're doing here, um, and that we really want to connect the community and bring everybody together. You know, businesses, organizations, residents, you know, faith communities, and show them that we are here. Uh, you know, we're it's about love, it's about community. Um, you know, we're not we're not scary. You know, we just want to live a happy, comfortable life like everybody else. Amy? Yeah, I think that it's really important. I think that um, especially in recent times, transgender issues have become more and more prevalent w between schools and um, in businesses and, and things like that. And I think that's really the the new frontier mm -hmm. that we need to reach those kids and let them know that it, that it's okay. And any thoughts on how you reach those kids? Well, I, the big thing with us is going to be getting out there and showing people that, that 
this is important to us, that if they are a victim of a crime, that they can come to us and that will treat them with respect. So do you see you going into schools in the Annapolis area just speaking about these issues? And Yes, yeah, certainly. In fact, I reached out to the high school but hadn't heard back from uh, about their group because I would love to meet with those kids. I believe the Naval Academy has a group. Key School does, uh, I know. Yeah, so those groups I think are really important to reach. Those are the kids and also PFLAG. You know, a lot of uh, families and kids are involved with PFLAG. Going forward, what events do you have coming up with Annapolis Pride, Jeremy? So the big one is the first parade and festival in Annapolis, and that will be on June 29th. 2019. Okay, and so what day of the week is that? That is a Saturday. All right, and what do you have planned for that? We will have a parade and a festival in Annapolis. I'm working with the city to determine you know, route, location, timing, um, so there'll be uh, more details to come. Food and music for sure. Food and music. There'll be you know, resources like PFLAG, the health department, Anne Arundel Medical Center will probably be there. I've been connecting with them. So we're just trying to connect with as many organizations as possible and bring them to the table. So that's June 29th? June 29th, 2019. Amy, is that on your calendar to be part of that? Yeah, definitely. We will be there. Hopefully we can have a table set up, but we'd also like to participate in the parade. And what events do you have on the calendar that you know that it ties into this, to your new position? Well, I've already, like I said, I've already set up a meeting. I'm meeting with um, some members of PFLAG tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, I have some other groups that I am going to go to their meetings. Um, so the, that's next on my list is just, just go through, meet people, and uh, talk to them about different uh, policies and procedures. And training. start bothering the Anne Arundel County Police Department. They're not aware of that yet, but I'm sure they'll be aware of this soon. Baltimore Police Department has? I believe they do. I believe they do. Um, I know DC definitely does. There's a lot of good information out there from larger cities. Mm -hmm. um, Toronto Police Service has an amazing resource uh, on their website that I am happy to steal parts of if they apply to our community. <laughs> steal? I don't know that that's the right <laughs> word for police, but yes, borrow? Yes. All right. Yeah, San Francisco obviously was probably one of the first police departments that did this. You've done your research. You? I, I haven't figured out which is the first, but uh, there's a lot of good resources out there online if your local police department doesn't have one then uh, maybe start harassing them too. When, I, when, when I yes when i googled uh these units obviously nypd was one of the first that came up atlanta uh let's see all almost every one of the hampton roads police departments which are small so i was happy to see that and that's virginia this is not a new thing and I saw some of those comments on when this sprang up, and I read them um, to my. You're more laid back, Jeremy. My, I just um, want to go at it, and I'm a journalist, and I can't go at it with these people. So, but uh, yeah, you know the comments. You nasty comments spring up on no matter what you put on social media. So yeah, this is not a new new idea. These this is a normal idea in police departments across the country, probably the world. It's 2018. Um, kudos to the Annapolis Police Department for doing it. Kudos to you, Jeremy, for coming up with the idea. Again, one more time where people can reach you because that's an important thing. Amy. Yeah, sure. They can reach me, again, at the police department, 410-268-9000, or at my email, which is amiguez at annapolis.gov. You can reach Annapolis Pride at info at annapolispride.org. And please find us on Facebook. We're posting lots of things about events and different things coming up. In the and community. soon enough on Snapchat for the younger ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week.